on preparing research paper, preparing research paper uh, for Escopas and ISA Index Journal Strategies for Beginners. And there is a technical team, Muhammad uh, Ashraful Ghani and uh, Muhammad Ishtiak uh, Ahmed. So I'd like to request all of uh, all of the technical members to uh, uh, to maintain the um, to maintain the uh, program. Uh, if they can, if anyone cannot join, if anyone can join, so please maintain this uh, process. Thank you so much. So before uh, uh, move on to the program. First of all, I would like to uh, invite Brother Omar Shari from City University to recite Surah, uh, Surah, to recite uh, Al Quran. Uh, I would like to invite uh, Brother Omar Sharif to recite Al Quran. First of all, uh, over to you, Brother Omar Sharif. Okay, thank you, Brother. Uh, first of all, I just want to say uh, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, uh, and I would like to thank you for this invitation. Um, let me introduce myself first. So my name is Omar Hussein. I'm originally from Egypt. Right now, I'm in Malaysia working as a business analyst. Uh, and also, by the way, I'm interested in this uh, research paper uh, topic. So I'm very happy to be here today. Let me start the recitation right now. Okay. Um, أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم سبح اسم ربك الأعلى الذي خلق فسوى والذي قدر فهدى والذي أخرج المرعى فجعله غتاء ذكرى سيذكر من يخشى ويتجنب الأشقى الذي يصلى النار الكبرى ثم لا يشرك فيها ولا يحيا قد أفلح من تزكى وذكر اسم ربه فصلى بل تؤثرون الحياة الدنيا بل تؤثرون الحياة الدنيا والآخرة خير والآخرة خير وأبقى إنها في الصحف الأولى صحف إبراهيم موسى صدق الله العظيم. Thank you. Back to you. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Brother Omar Hussain, uh, for reciting uh, from our uh, Holy Quran. So before uh, we <clears throat> move on to the program, uh, first of all, I would like to welcome and thank you all of. Uh, you for joining today's webinar and that is organized by Bangladesh Student Union Malaysia. So before we move on uh, to our program, I'd like to remind all the audience that an attendance form link will be shared in the chat box. Mm -hmm. So uh, during a Q&A session, the certificate will, certificates of the participant will be given based on the mark attendance from, form. So please fill up the form correctly. I will share the link later on. Uh, to begin with our program, I would like to invite the President of Bangladesh Student Union Malaysia, Muhammad Zahirul Islam, to deliver a welcoming, welcoming speech. So uh, I would like to request Brother uh, Zahirul Islam to deliver a welcoming speech. Thank you so much. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. 
Uh, first of all, uh, I'd like to thank everyone for joining this uh, workshop. And at the same time, I also would like to express my um, gratitude to our uh, speaker, Dr. Muhammad Asadur Islam, uh, uh, for his efforts and the interest to join with us. And I also would like to uh, thank to our current reciter, uh, Umar Hussain, and our technical team, our designing team, and other committee members who has contributed to organize uh, this event. And we also uh, would like to uh, express our um, gratitude to all the participants who uh, has been waiting with persons uh, due to our difficult technical difficulties, we couldn't start our uh, workshop timely. So we are extremely sorry uh, for that. I hope that uh, you will enjoy the session. And we have many more exciting events in the upcoming months. So please uh, join our uh, Facebook page uh, so that you can get the updated uh, information. So I'll not take much of your time. Now uh, I would like to uh, pass the microphone to our moderator to start the session. So thank you so much. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi Uh, thank you very much, uh, the President Muhammad Zawirul Islam, for very uplifting and welcoming speech. And now I'm sure uh, everyone is very excited for today's main talk. Uh, our honorable keynote speaker for today's webinar, <coughs> uh, Dr. Muhammad Asadul Islam, uh, who is working on uh, assistant professor in Prag University, BBS, Prag University, Bangladesh, an adjunct uh, research fellow. Sanwe Business School, uh, Sanwe Uni uh, University, Malaysia. And also he's working on a ma managing editor, international journal quality and innovative IJQI. Uh, and also the PhD management, University of Malaysia, UPM, Malaysia. So now uh, 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 I would like to go to uh, Dr. Muhammad Asadul Islam to deliver his, his speech, speech. So the mic is over to you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, uh, Nasim Arafat, uh, for your introduction. And I would like to thank you everyone who attended uh, this workshop. I would like to thank especially um, Juhul for his efforts to connect with me, start this uh, organizing workshop. And we are also uh, going to organize some more, inshallah, in the future. I would like to thank to the technical team who are behind the, uh, this journey. I really appreciate your efforts. And uh, so I'm not going to more time. I'm just starting. I hope you have already known me. So that's why nothing to glorify me, just uh, I'm going to share. So let's start. One moment, please. Yes. Firstly, uh, you know, you can see the whole screen, can you? And you can hear me yes. nice and loud? Yes, sir. Yes, yes uh, we can yes. see the whole screen. Yes, yes sir, we can hear you. All right. You know, firstly, the thing is that, uh, please ask me at any time if you have any questions in your mind. And you don't need to worry about the interruption. I really welcome it and my, uh, teaching pedagogy training and workshop running way is that I normally take the questions rather than I speak more. So please feel free to interrupt and being very friendly should be fine. That's why I just start that please ask me whether I speak all the time. Again, feel free to ask please. So uh, is there anyone who has already publication in uh, Scopus Index or ISI Index journal? Can anyone tell me something? I mean, I have, or you don't have something, or some people are trying to get in. Anyone among the hundred participants? Uh, yeah, I, I, let me introduce me. I, I am Ian uh, from Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. And uh, I'm uh, at the first uh, period of a uh, master's degree. My master's degree is in progress. And uh, I am uh, writing a bibliometric analysis. Uh, trying, uh, but uh, uh, is not accomplished yet. Okay. All right. I believe many of you have come here today that 
uh, you are going to prepare yourself for Scopus and ISA index journals. Firstly, what I would like to tell you is that it is not anything impossible. This is 100% possible if you just know the strategies to go ahead. Some people say this is a roller coaster. I also say it's a roller coaster, but to be honest, this is something that you will actually enjoy. So that's why, firstly, why you would like to publish in Scopus or ISA Index Journal? From my point, from my experience, I would like to share only two things. Number one, so many reasons, right? But I would like to two things. Number one, international recognition. If you publish in Scopus Index, journals published by renowned publishers and also IRA index journals, you will get international recognition. You will definitely get the international recognition that are very significant for you. If you can publish, jobs will be looking for you rather than you look for the job. So what I said, if you can publish, jobs will be looking for you rather than you look for the job. You will open the LinkedIn in the morning, you will see some <clears throat> professors are trying to allure you, attract you to their university or business schools. You will check out that your email has some offers. That's why international recognition is very significant. And this international recognition leads you to the employability. Your employability definitely improved if you can publish. It is not necessary that you will get the job in the universities. There are so many research-oriented organizations worldwide. For example, ADB, or UN, UNDP, you know, SARC, so many organizations, they look for the good, you know, uh, researchers who can publish, who can organize their research report and everything. So these two things, very significant for me. And I think by public publishing in the Scopus and, you know, ISA index journals, I have been tremendously benefited. So that's why I really, really appreciate people who actually publish in journals who can understand the enjoyment, the gladness, the you know, fruit of the publications in high impact journals. Since you are the beginners, I just try to you know, uh, keep my, all the things surrounding Scopus and ISA index journals, rather than I would say high impact journals. Because high impact journals, it is something different, although I will be sharing you something. So please, Take it easy, and I believe one day you will be publishing in very high index journals. Can you see the screen called predatory journal to airing journals? Yes, we can see. Yes, yes, yes. yes we can see that. Right. Yes. I yes. started my publication in 2016 or 2015. Someone just told me if you publish, <clears throat> your employability will be good. You will get the jobs, you will get the fund you will get this and this and that, so many things. And I said, okay, I will publish. I didn't know where to publish, but my one of the papers, most read papers, which was published in a predatory journal. I didn't know what does it mean by the predatory journal even. But when I came to know, it was really, really embarrassing. It was really, really, you know, heartening moment for me. I was literally crying, but I didn't stop me myself there where I am now. One of my paper from my thesis, I got two publications from thesis. One of the papers has been aired in studies in higher education. This is one of the you know, top 1% journals in the world. And in the higher education industry, this is one of the top five journals. So I got the publications here after the few years. So why I'm saying all these things? Because if you have published already in predatory journal, it is not that you will not be able to publish in the ranked journals. So that's why it is possible. It is really possible for you if you know the tricks, if you know the, the how to way, I mean, how to you know, travel there. <clears throat> the thing is that what I believe as well, that you should have the excitement about publication in the Scopus and ISI index journal. From my point of view, you should be excited. You should be celebrating your publication that it is good. Celebration is good for you because it has a positive impact on your employability in the universities and research institutions. When you apply for a job, people try to judge you in different point of view. 
If they see that they, you have published, but you never shared in social network or LinkedIn or somewhere else, it means that you are not someone excited by your publications. That means that in the future, you may leave the publications, but publications, that is what they need. That's why you should have, you know, uh, the <clears throat> tendency to share the things, celebrating the publications. I know one professor, his name is Marcus Lim. He has published more than 70 earring journals and some other journals. What he does all the time, he actually share all those publications in the Facebook and in everywhere. So what I have learned from it that you cannot actually stop your you know, uh, enjoyment. You should enjoy all the time your publications, all right? You should say, hooray, I have published. If you do that, that will definitely help you to prepare another article and publish and then again celebrate. That is from my experience. Some people do not like to celebrate it. I know I respect that, but I have seen the consequence of that as well. So now is the time to say how to prepare the research paper. Preparing research paper is different kind of way there are. There are so many ways that people can you know, prepare, so many ways. And in this regard, I will share the way I do prepare, the way I go ahead whenever I try to prepare a scope of index journals. So what you will learn, you will learn from my point of view whenever I discuss. But if you have any confusion about others' way of preparing papers, and you know that, you may again ask me as well that what you should do. I may try to entertain you with some exceptional or some necessary ideas. All right, can you hear me, everyone? Yes, yes we can hear you. Yeah. Right. Yes, bro. Here, yes, we can. I prepare here three approaches. Yes, bro. Do it yourself. What does it mean? I mean, you will be preparing papers by yourself. Uh, can I just uh, hold on for a second and then I talk with um, Joro? Joro, can you hear me? Yes, the door is clear. Yes. Sir, everyone can hear you. Can you just ahead, send please. everyone an email with the Facebook, you know, live so that they can actually see there rather than entering here? Because here only the limitation is 100. You got it, Jarul? You got it, Jarul? me, Facebook and LinkedIn, you can mail to the registration course. You can send it to the registration course. Can you hear me? Okay. Thank you. So firstly, do it yourself. And second is do it by others. D-I-O. Third is do it by uh, others. I mean, you have the RA. And here, do it by others means that you pay the money and you get it prepared. And that is what is the tremendously damaging approach. If you do that, you don't have any right, you know, to be a good teacher or good researchers because you don't have that much of deeper idea about the things. And that's why I always carefully pe tell people, please do not get papers done by others. That will damage you in the long run. Here, do it by others means RA. Here, if you have you know, ideas, if you're tremendously busy, you can recruit some RA, they will work for you, but it does not mean that you will take all of them. You will read, you will explore, you will examine, you will analyze, you will critically evaluate the things, then you will try to take something from that, not all of it. And most important one, what I believe and what I do is that, do it by us, D-I-O. Can you see that? Yes, do it by us. Yes, sir. Right. Here, do it by us means, you know, you do prepare research paper by some people rather than yourself. Look, Scopus and ISI, they have international standards. You have already known that Scopus discontinued 
very good journals, so-called journals of very good publishers, including MDP, ITN, Frances, and some others. Why? Because there was some this interesting factor which actually reducing the quality of the publications. Here, if you'd like to really prepare a good paper, I think you should follow this approach. Do it by us. It means you may have some people who have the expertise in methodology, who have the skill and knowledge about the literature review, who can analyze the paper excellent way, who can even bring the conclusion nicely, who can even articulate the implications, research limitations and future directions nicely. Furthermore, you can get some people who are very expert in terms of amalgamation. All right, now you are talking about the do it by us. But the point is here, it is totally directly here. No one is there to tell you in the beginning of your beginning of your research that come and join my research papers. I don't tell. I tell none, but I tell them work for it and then be us. So who are you? You have to start first. If your idea is very good, try to convince them they will be interested and take their insights very much effectively so that you can make yourself to us. Got it? So now if I say like this way, what's the most important things? If you'd like to regularly publish, regularly publish in Scopus and ISA index journals, do it yourself and do it by us. These are very significant approaches. This is how you should prepare, all right? The thing is that I started myself. Then I found, oh my God, this is very strong and this is very critical, I cannot. So I took it by us. If you go to my Google Scholar, you'll find out that most of the papers are written by three to, three to four or five you know, co-authors. I know you have the questions that so many co-authors don't work, yes. Just one year ago or two years ago, I didn't ask so many co-authors, you know, to work. A few days ago, I just, you know, delayed one professor from my team because he does not work. And I indirectly convinced him that I don't like to entertain you anymore because you don't work. And he's one of my very favorite professors, but I don't work with her, him anymore because he does not work. And others get annoyed because he doesn't work. It means that why we are working, why he should take the lead position or something, you know, better position in the co-author list. Then I said, okay, I'm not going to work anymore. Now I'm telling you, the person who will start, but you should always find out some us because it is really needed. That is what I will prove you in the later slides. You may ask me, sir, if I do by us, some people give me some pain. Some people are not cooperating. Some people are very taking too much time. Some people de you know, demotivate me, blah, 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 blah. Still, I encourage you, find out the us, because alone, this is really tough, especially in the beginning stage. Research is something that it is, you know, Teacher, I mean, uh, what I would say, someone you should follow, someone you should learn, it's a mentoring role. It is something called, you know, uh, in Bangla, it is called, if I say in English, it is called that you feel someone who can contribute. You will feel that someone wiser than you and they will contribute. Try to find out them. But please do not waste their time. They are too busy. You have to wait for a long time and you have to prepare something solid. You have to show that you have worked very hard. Don't make any hunky-punky. So what does it mean by hunky-punky here? It means that here you are copy and pasting and you are making it. You are taking the help of chat GPT or something others. It really upset that professor or that wise person. Why? 
because you are thinking that professor may not be aware of this kind of things. Oh dears, they already know that how and where you have got this from if your work is not good. A few days ago, one of my co-authors have sent some, one of my co-authors has sent one work. Whenever I read it, I was very upset. And then I tried to very friendly and being very gentle to convince that co-author, this is not something I expected because whatever you have done, this is copy and paste and this is from this and there. And that person was very surprised. How can I know? And then I told, I am trying to read all right. this from last seven years. So I know where the things are lying. So that's why I do not like to make them upset because they don't have the time. The people who do research, they have very good work-life balance, but it does not mean that they will entertain you all the time, you know, rectifying your you know, mistake. They would like to see your serious, your passion, your persistence in the work, not in your good email writing, not in your mouth, not in your voice, okay? So that's why do it by us. It's very significant, but we have to be that. Any questions so far in this stage in the chat box? Organizers, anything? No, sir. Nasim, Jorol, any question from the chat box in the chat? No, sir. No, sir. Okay. No, sir. It's clear. Okay. So I would say that yes, you can publish whenever you do it by us. Here, the thing is that so far you are thinking that preparing a research paper, you need to be very, very knowledgeable. Am I right? Yes, yes. Are, are you thinking something like this? Yeah. You are thinking something, yes. you know, you need to be, everything is need to be very, very too much, too much, right? Yes. I think most of you are thinking that, but sure. yes. my approach is no. My approach is what? No. I never ever think that I have to do all the time research. I do take you know, holidays, I do take time, I do take break, and I do make sure that I play with my daughter, I give my time to my family, my friends, colleagues, and everyone. If you can do that, you will be able to prepare research papers occasionally. That is what I do. So firstly, can you see it? Please do not bring so many things in your head whenever you are preparing a research paper. Next, you do not need to be very expert. Next, you do not need to be very best in the English always. Here, the word is always keep mind. In the beginning, you do not need, but later you need very good in English. In the beginning, you do not need to be very expert, but you have to have the patient or something, I'm coming there. You do not need to perfectly learn the methodology. You don't. I didn't know. I still don't know the methodology too much, but still I'm publishing. You have to make sure that keep you in your head that we'll, we'll do prepare the paper by us. Do you hear me this line? Whenever in this workshop, you should keep in mind that you are keeping in mind all the time, I am preparing the paper by us rather than myself. Got it? Anyone say can he, yes? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Right. Yes. So you do not need to perfectly know the methodology too much. You do not need to perfectly know analyzing the data too much. You don't. You do not need to read 24 seven, you don't. You do not need to be too much worried as well. All right, so you can say, oh my God, everything is no, then what? This is something like this, right? Then what I do then? Is it? Yes. Exactly, so let's see what you need to be. You need to be firstly sincere. As I said, you have to prepare the paper by us. If you go to by us, 
your co-authors need to know that you are sincere. You are not someone fake. You are not someone vague. You are not someone lazy. You are not someone who manipulate. You are not someone who does not chat with the cultural aspects. Do you know that chatting by cultural aspects means you straight away sending the message to others. It is your cultural point of view, but the receiver may find it very offending. You have to understand where I'm sending the SMS or my email. Is that respectful to him or not? Yeah. Right? You have to make sure that you are honest. You have to make sure that you are sharing minded. What is that? Sharing minded. Let me tell you something. Who is the Mark Zuckerberg? Can you tell me? Anyone? Who is the Jack Ma? Anyone? And, uh, is book right. Mark Zuckerberg yes. is not the founder of the Facebook. Jack Ma is not the founder of the Alibaba. Oh my God, what Dr. Asadul is saying. Again, I repeat, Jack Ma is not the founder of the Alibaba. Mark Zuckerberg is not the founder of the Facebook. They are co-founder. What is that? Co-founders. Co-founder. This co-founder means that they actually have the sincere sharing mind. They share their ideas with people. Share your ideas with people. If some people live with that idea, you should tell him thank you because that idea may not be, you know, very tough. He entertained it himself. It could be very tough, he or she could take you in the journey. So maybe that idea was very little, was very small. In the research, you should be highly sharing minded. Share your idea with your peers, with your you know, teachers, with your supervisors, with someone who got the degree. Because trust me, your idea, whatever it is, they are also looking for the idea and they're busy with their own ideas rather than you copy. I share these things. I occasionally, very beginning, I found so many people take my ideas very easily. Then I said, oh my God, why they take it? But later I found out that those ideas were rubbish. All right, so please try to share them. What do you need to be more? Ready to accept the major correction, major revision. Try to accept all the time major revision very, very positive way. You have to make sure that you do not feel offended from the major revision. I got one publication in Emerging Market, International Journal of Emerging Market. We had to revise the paper for five times. Although there are so many renowned professors and researchers in the team, but still we had to revise quite a few times. We accepted. We warmly, gladly welcomed the major revision. We didn't take any kind of offending comments or anything. So you have to ready to accept the major revision. Make sure that you are ready to face co-authors lack of cooperation. As I said, it is by us, you will be benefited, right? But again, <clears throat> you will be tormented. You will be you know, tortured mentally by your co-authors. You will be hearing something from your co-authors you never expected, but still you have to take it very positively. Although your co-authors are very highly, you know, educated people, but sometimes they behave like they are illiterate people. They behave that, oh my God, they behave like that someone just a less than A level or O level. You will be astonished by their behavior, by the lack of cooperation. But still, you have to make sure that you take this cooperation as a challenge and you are going ahead. You should not stop there whenever someone is not cooperating. You have to publish in better journals just to cheat, you know, show him or her that look at here where I am and how long it will take for you to come here. Then committed, you have to 
be very committed with your publication journey. And last, not the least, consistency. The thing is that if you publish one paper tonight, if you stop there, you don't try to write again, you don't try to read again, you won't be able to publish another one. One paper publication is an accidental. People may think, oh my God, you publish one, but no publications more. But make sure that you publish quite a few of them. Then people will think that you are someone has really gained that much of a skill and attitude yeah, and knowledge to ensure publications smoothly. Publishing journal papers is not something a rocket science. It is a very, very doable thing. So how I'm going to tell you how to prepare the research paper? It is going to be sample papers I'll be showing you. Let me share you some papers. I, how I do that. I use the highlighters. You know, I use the highlighters in the papers and that is what I will be sharing with you. And I have the very note-taking moments or something like this. Can you share, see the paper here, the highlighters? Can you yes. check? If you see the way I read, can you see here? Yes. And yes. then if you have, you know, some notes, can you see that? And you can see yeah. in the table, I do take the notes, you know, and I try to tell me all the time, oh my God, how much stupid I am. How can I be that much of lazy that I didn't notice that? I didn't notice that much of things. See here, the way I do the things and all these papers published in very high impact journals. Try to follow the very high impact journals. See, in the methodology, some of these sentences are exceptional and I try to note them out. I try Hello. to use different kinds of notes. Hello, yes? Yeah, I cannot see that paper you are presenting. No, no, I'm just showing in the camera. Can you see that? No. Can you see my face? No, no, we cannot see you. You cannot yes, see my face. We can see you. Yes, no problem. We are seeing it. Yes. Now we can see me. Now we can see. Now we can see the paper also. We can oh my see. God! You miss my beautiful face, right? <laughs> no, no, we can see. We can, we can see, see your you. face actually. No problem. Your face too. Sorry about that. I, I it, thought that you it, are. It must be a problem with the slow yes, can see, can internet see. speed. We can see the paper also. Okay. See here. Can you see now? Yes, yes, yes. But yes, can yes, yes. Yes, we can see, but we cannot. Uh, but page is not clear. Yeah, yes. not I don't, clear. I don't, I don't, it do not need to be clear. I just wanted to tell you how much I'm serious about that. Got it? Yes, just I yes. We got wanted this. to give we you the feeling. The pages, that, pages, but the page is not clear. Yes, okay. I'll be doing that. About the note taking moment, you should have the note in your mobile phone, in your, you know, uh, by the soft copy and the hard copy. Because a researcher mind all the time busy with the thinking. You can see me now, my face, can you see that? Yes, yes. 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 So For what sure I'm can. saying, researcher mind, it is always explorative. For example, what I do, I used to be speaking a lot whenever I was in the group, but now I speak less. Why? Because I accommodate all others inside into me. And then I try to figure out what I have taken it from me. And I have learned it from Mahathir, you know, Prime Minister Mahathir Muhammad. He said in a group, you should not speak too much. You should speak less. And you should consume all the things from others rather than you deliver something rubbish, all right? So you should have the notes. You should have the notes in mobile phone, notes in the physically and pen and pencil with you all the time, whenever you are in the beginning. Because you will be reading lots of papers. You know, you don't know whenever some interesting words came into your head and then it goes away. You will be feeling bad if it goes away. That's why I tell all the time, please make sure that you always keep the notes with you. See here, some similar papers from reputed publishers. I mean, you should have the 
some similar papers from the reported publishers, not only from only Amaral's Taylor and Francais science direct, it can be Springer, Macmillan, Wheelie, so many others, you know, all the in the science, all the journal, you know, paper publishers should be there. So firstly, I will be telling you about the sourcing criteria. Can you see the Google Scholar here? Yes. 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 Right. You see here, I was interested regarding the green human resource management. Around, you know, in my uh, MBA life, during my MBA, I was about interested where I was in UK. As you know, that UK was very interested about the green things. And that time I had no plan to publish, but my passion was there all the time. So I was working on it, not with the publication things, just from my enthusiasm. And I started writing the papers in 2016. And then I published few papers in the green human resource management. If you search me in the green human resource management, MD Asim Islam, you will see that so many papers are in Q1 journals by me and my honorable co-authors. I sincerely respect them. I'm really grateful to them. They actually helped me out to be here where I am now. And I'm still learning from them every day. But some of them have been excluded from there. As I said, some of them are sitting down there without any work without any contribution. And I am directly or indirectly just making the slided out of my team. So if you see here, as I said, reported journal. Can you see Taylor and Francis here? Yes. yes. Can you yes. see Willie? Yeah. Right. These are something, you know, if you could scroll down, you will see so many other good publishers. And you have to, read those sample papers before you start writing the papers. And you have to make sure you highlight it, you take the notes, and then you start something. You should read all the time, all the time, you know, updated papers. I mean, all the time, last 10 years update. It's better if you do five years. Nowadays, you know, professor saying it is better two years because chat GPT, artificial intelligence changing things very faster. So you have to all the time be careful about the time. Now, if you publish in the bibliometric or scientometric or review paper, then you can go, you know, two decades, four decades ago, even six decades or five decades ago, doesn't matter. But if you published, explorative and examining investigating papers, I mean a quantitative and quality paper by interview or survey observations or, you know, some kind of longitudinal and even by the, you know, cross-sectional paper, whatever it is, you have to always concentrate on the, what is called updated papers. See here, Springer has come, Springer has come, see here, Emerald has come. So what I do, I all the time try to make sure that I read from the good publishers rather than predatory publishers who do not check the quality of the papers. So in the preparation journey, firstly, you have to read a lot. You have to take the help from Google Scholar. Then you have to search your interested item in the year. Then you have to make sure that you search by the years and then you Keep eye on in where? In the publishers. I'm not talking about the journal's name. I'm talking about the publishers because some journals, they are very, very, you know, not good even by the, uh, they are very, very, you know, uh, strict. So make sure that all the journals published by most of the publishers, they're good. Try to read them rather than you ignore them, although they are not Scopus indexed. Okay, any questions so far? Any question? Chat box. No question. Sir. Anything in the chat box? Jorul? Yes, there is. Can you please tell me what's the question? Yes, the question uh, says, uh, how yes. can I know a journal is a high impact journal? Okay. 
that is not now. I will answer it later. Please keep it, take it uh, nicely. Any other okay. question? Uh, I'd like to request all the participants, like uh, we will, the Q&A session will be after the speech. Okay, great. But still feel free if you'd like to ask anything. See here, this is Emerald. If you go to the Emerald Insight, if you put green human resource management, you will see this is how articles are coming. And you have to make sure that you do differentiate like this. You don't need to read the expert bringing case studies or I'll, you should read the early sites one. And the thing is that if you are a beginner, this is how you have to come. Otherwise, if you are an expert, then I think this discussion is going to be cross communication for you. But if you are the beginner, you have to use search like this way. Otherwise, you will be in very big problem. You have to know the trends, what are going on. Whatever you are thinking now, it might be someone else thinking. And I all the time encourage people in the beginning, try to prepare the quantity papers, not the quality papers. Although I publish quality papers and my you know, high impact journal publications are qualitative more than quantitative. But still I encourage people to do quantitative. Why? Because if you do publish quantity, there could be so much differences with other existing you know, papers in the world. But if you do quality, you will find out that, oh my God, totally same to same idea has been or have been published already. And you will be surprised. That's why in the very beginning of the research journey, you should not be annoyed by that tragedy. You should be always try to go to the quantity first, then come to the quality. That is my humble you know, request and you know, support for you and very good information for you that if, before you start preparing a research paper in quality. So parts of an ideal research paper. So I hope this is where I'll be showing you something, you know, very important things. You can see a research paper should have introduction. And that introduction normally is also called background of the study. Have you hear me? Yes. So this yes, one, what is me. called background of the study as well. Here, then second is literature review. Some people say, you know, review, just only review or review in the past or something, review of the previous papers, review something, something like this. This is where is the methodology and then findings and results. You just analyze the results and we present here and discussions, implications, conclusion and research limitations and future directions. These are the, you know, ideal parts of your research paper and also of the thesis papers, if you do research oriented, you know, thesis rather than the paper oriented thesis. However, you can see here, discussions and implications can sit down together. I encourage you do not bring them in together as you are a beginner. The experts can do that, but you must not try it. You should put discussion and implications separately, making sure that everything are done nicely. Then the conclusion, make sure you can also do this, conclusion, research limitations, and future directions together. But again, I'm telling you, conclusion is not something that you bring new. It is something that you summarize the things. And research limitations is something I will be discussing about all these things later. So you have to make sure that you put them separately in press your you know, submission officials. Here, the first impression, most of the things, right? Of course, you, one moment, please. My laptop is showing that charge is going down. All right, it is not fine. I mean, where you are, can you hear me? Yes. 
When yes. you, were, you were going to prepare the paper, you read so many papers, you have even taken notes so many things, you have you know, discussed with the peers so much, you spent lots of time in the library, you spent lots of time in the, you know, uh, what I would say, in uh, everywhere. Your life was actually with what? With the research, research, research. But the point is that you have to be, whenever you're starting preparation, you have to be brief and specific. Have you got that? You have to be brief and specific, very brief and very specific. Otherwise, you will be in big problem. Why it is that? It is because, you know, the people are, you know, in the first stage, if you are busy with so many things, so many things, then it is really difficult. It is really difficult to get them into a paper. Editors want you to play with one idea or one specific idea, but with so many variables. Some you know, significant but specific aspects, otherwise you will be in problem. All the time, it's the brief and specific. Can you see Bonayan tree and bonsai? Yes. Yes. Right. This is the Bonayan tree, which is very big. But see here, this is a bonsai. This is also a Bonayan tree. Can you see that everything of it is here, but very small way? Am I right? Yes, you're right. Yes. Yes. Exactly. The research papers are like the bonsai. But make sure, see here, just a fun example, but never apply in terms of impact. The research paper has more impact than what? Than so-called theses, theses. There are many theses around the world, but they are called so-called, you know, theses. They are not something impactful. Let me, uh, you know, switch off my WhatsApp because so many people are WhatsApping. So be specific. If you are with the big bonan tree in your head, you cannot be able to prepare a research paper. That's why you have to make sure that you are specific but brief because your research paper should not exceed more than 10,000 to 12,000 words. I would prefer if you prepare a paper by 7,000 to 12,000 words. If it's more than 12,000 words, I think nobody will accept it at the beginning. They will say that you have exceeded the journal, you know, uh, limitation or restriction. The point is that why people do not like to big research papers because they want something very quick, something very quickly they want. Now here, never try to make it perfect. What I said, everything, especially in thesis and research paper has criticism, not free of error, not error free. It should be not error free, okay? It has some, in thesis or research paper, Try to minimize errors, but never try to make it should be like this. In the research paper, try to minimize the error, but never try to make it completely error free. Never. Every research paper, every thesis in the world, if you even read, you will say, oh my God, so many mistakes. I don't like that. I don't like that argument. Why is that? Why it's not that? So that's why you are a beginner. If you start publishing, if you start publishing a research paper, you have to make sure that you are not someone who actually try to prepare something completely free. If you do do that, then you will be tired once upon a time, one time, and you will be annoyed by the perfection. You will be disinterested, demotivated. Rather, 
you should always try to reduce, always try to minimize the error. But it is not that you should put the errors intentionally and editors, especially co-authors who are expert, they know what is the sincerely error or what is the error without the sincerity? What is the error is the intentionally? What is the error being very capricious? What is the error being very fake person? And what is the error from being a sincere someone? Got it? That's why as a, if you start alone, you have to make sure that you minimize the errors and send them something good one, but never try to make it the perfect one. If you try to do that, you will be stopping there rather than publishing. Because I know so many friends, my friends, my colleagues start publication, but beginning they think that we will do something very perfect, but they can never finish it. All right, so that is very significant. Paper preparation, parts of the paper and sample approach. I will be showing you some parts and some sample, one or two samples so that you can understand how to actually prepare papers. Following the journal format and reference, you have to make sure that you do that. Submit with a good cover letter. Make sure your corresponding author has the international you know, recognition, especially from the journal. I do submit it. I did submit some papers in the journal. They rejected it within three, four days. But the same paper I get submitted by another renowned, you know, researcher. They didn't reject it. They even sent to the reviewers. We got the you know, major correction, but still, finally, we got it published. That's why make sure that you do corresponding you know, with a good, you know, person, good, renowned researchers, rather than someone is from, you know, uh, is very beginning. So here, this is the introduction. Can you see that? Hello, everyone. Yeah, we can see that. Yes. The introduction, background, context, research problem statement. One moment, please. Sorry about the interruption. Some people are there who actually disturb. Anyway, so objectives and uh, significance. Look at here in the thesis. These are maintained serially. I mean, serial maintained serial normally. But there is no need to follow the serial in the research paper because many research papers do not follow this serial. Moreover, some of these are highlighted in the literature review section in the paper. Please, this discussion are very significant for you. What I just said, I just said that these are the main elements of the introduction part of a research paper. Can you hear me? Yes. It means yes. that you have to put all these things in the introduction part or the background of the study. But in the thesis, these are normally you know, this way, but in the research paper, some people don't put like this way. So let me show you something here. Can you see one publication here, you know, is exploring research challenges and can you see the moderating role of psychological empowerment or something? Yes. 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 If I show you this paper, Uh, it is from, you know, International Journal of Emerging Markets. Can you see that? Yes. Right. Let me show you the earring paper. Why is that? It's here. This is the highest highly impacted journal so far. I believe some more is coming by next uh, one or two years or maybe more. So what I'm talking about, I'm talking about 
your introduction. Am I right? Yes. Yes. Exactly. Since I'm talking about the introduction, what I have just told you, I have just told you that your introduction includes what? Background, context, research topic, research problem statement, rationale of, for the study, objectives and significance. All these things are serially maintained in the thesis, but these are not serially maintained in the research papers, but they are put one or two sentence or maybe in the literature review. Let me show you something. If I tell you the background, let me tell you to hear. It is about the gender and leadership in the public higher education in South Asia, examining individual and social, cultural, and organizational barriers to female inclusion. We have got this paper in open access. And this paper is one of my best papers. And this fund, open fund, was given by the University of Lincoln. And my research was funded by the research, you know, UEPM, University of Putra, Malaysia. I'm really grateful to both university and their respected professors and others who were involved in it. I really do remember them with very of my heart and I do respect. And I have very good contact with them. My dears, can you see a background sentence here? Yes, you can see. Right. The most important thing yes. is that if you go to these people, you will find out this is true. They have told it or they have adored it, something like this. What the beginners do, they actually play with the, you know, editors. They put fake, you know, citations. As a result, they are in problem. Now come to this here, work environment, research practice, and millennial, something like this. Can you see the background information here? See the context here, all the things are here. You put it here. Then you can see here that how I made the confusion here about the problem statement, the gap. However, this generation is the most important source of employees because they are the largest you know, generational group in the global workforce and represent the future organizations. Therefore, their intention is interact, retention is imperative because it allows the organization to spend more time producing less, uh, you know, produce time producing and less time on, on activities, blah, 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 blah. And that's why retention is very significant. So can you see the words I just shared with you? background, context, problem, and rational objectives, and just rational, rational important are the mostly same things, but there are some differences as well. You can go there, you'll find out that we put some, you know, objectives nicely, but why we need the papers to be prepared. I will share all the papers with you. I hope the organizers will be sharing with you. Don't worry about the notes or anything. Now just listen nicely, so that you can take something from here, from the discussion. Okay. So my point is that if you see all these papers, they are similar in terms of what? In terms of the, all these elements, they are here some way, somehow a different way. Maybe sometimes rational are put in the very beginning, background are put there, context put in the, at the end, Objectives are put even in the beginning. Significance are also put in the beginning, something like this. That's why they are there, but they are not serially maintained. Always make sure, understand that your research paper is not a bonan tree, it's not a thesis. Any question from this part, please, anyone? I really couldn't get you to answer a question. I think I didn't hear it nicely. What can I just can you take the question? Because these questions are very important to you know let them know what is interaction. Then for what you paid online something? 
All right, now raise your hand. Who would like to speak? Any questions so far here? I want to know the rationale for the study. Yes, one more. Where to put, right? Yes. Exactly. Anyone else have a similar question? Yes, sir, I have also this question. Any other question, please, please ask me. Otherwise, you won't be able to, you know, understand that uh, what I would say. Um, uh, I have the same question. Um, the difference between the rationale of the study and the research problem. The research problem is the gap. That is not the thing. I'm just telling you, let's understand about the significance and the rationale. What are they? Okay. The thing is that significance is the important who will be benefited and rationale is the justification why. And the problem statement is what something a gap that is known. You've got the three difference here, all, that, all, all of you. Let me tell you again. Importance who will be benefited. So many stakeholders even the theory or the literature review itself will be benefited. But the rationale is the justification why this paper is significant now or in the future. Problem statement is the gap, but all of them are the introduction or the background of the study. Got it? Thank you, sir. Have you got the difference? very significant difference here. Yeah, we got the difference, right. Thank you, sir. Any other question? Anything yeah. that you are paranoid, confused about it? Uh, uh, doctor, I, I'd like to ask a question. The, my question okay. is that, why do you like to put the research, uh, research question? Uh, you, uh, you have given research objective, but uh, what about the research question? Where would uh, where you would like to put it? See here, it is at the end of the you know, literature review. I mean, oh, sorry, at the end of the introduction section. Can you see that? Yeah, 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 I can see that, but. Uh, but, please tell me. But the uh, content that you have displayed in the screen, there are, uh, their research question option is not there, available. That is why I'm asking for. Yeah, no need. You sh must not put a headline that research question. That Understood. will reduce your paper quality, because the big journals, they want this heading, they don't want. Especially so, Scopus and ISA index journals, who is published without any, you know, what I would say, any payment, free journals, they never like it. You do not need to separate it from the introduction or something like this. Someone here just sent me a personal from the Facebook that, if the significance of the study is the something that important and if the rational justification then how is the problem statement can you please tell me again i'm telling problem statement is the amalgamation of both but they put the gaps let me tell you what is the gap then gap can be so many how it is being firstly what i keep someone has done someone has not done it and someone has done in the another context, in another methodology, in the another sample, and another geography, another industry, and another generation, and even another product or service, or something like this. And even someone from the theory, that is what the theory, and someone also cite like that, some other people contributed us, and they put it there in the research limitations and future directions. All this comes from the problem statement, in the problem statement. Any question? So whenever you are writing the background of the study, what is the strategy here? The strategy here is that you have to make sure you put the, all the things together, but don't try to make it perfect. Firstly, try to write as much as you can, then read it again, then read it, write it again, read it again, write it again, then again, compare with some established papers, okay? Then write it. I'm telling you something. Whenever I got admission in UPM, I was given a 
journal, which journal name, International Journal of you know, Economics and Management, IGEN. One of the you know, just issues or volume given by the Dean Office. I'm really grateful to them because that one was something hard copy. So I, it helped me to read a lot because I don't like spending time too much. And that's why you can see that I do print a lot, but I read them. Some people print, but they never read. You know, you could see that how many highlighters I have, but unfortunately my daughter possesses all of them at the moment, but I'll bring them out just to show you the sample a while, after a while. So the thing is that you never make any kind of headline of these inside the research papers. That is very, very bad to impress one renowned publisher. Can you see my papers? Do you see any kind of here underneath of the introduction, any headings? Can you see that? Yeah. You must not, but to be honest, all this introduction section contains background, context, research problem, rationale, objectives, and significance. Although some of these are not there fully, they are in the literature review. Any questions so far here? Have you learned something new? Yes, yes, yes. The background, in one sentence, what exactly is the background? Background means why you are going to study it. Who actually gave you the pain? Who actually gave you the trigger? Who actually gave you the very foundation? Let me give an example. See here. Creating sustainable workplace. I am someone who always like clean and less energy consuming things. And that has helped me to start my very famous article. It is called Exploring Challenges and Solutions in Applying. And this paper has given me a lot in the academia. You can see this paper gave me how many citations? 129 citations. And this is my first you know, Fantastic. paper in very high impact journal in the Q1 journal. Got it? So what it given? The background. Background means that something gave you the pain, something gave you the passion, something gave you the trigger. The do it, please. Got it, dears? Yes, thank you. Most welcome. Are you something? Have you got something new? Please tell me. Have you got something new about the introduction section? Yes. yes. Very yes. new and very informative. Thank you. Excellent. I'm so much happy, you know. Thank you so much for telling that. Uh, I Dr. try to utilize my time. Good. Uh, uh, doctor, uh, I would like to ask one more question. Where uh, do you like to put hypothesis in the introduction section? Will it be there or it, it, it will be somewhere else? Never put the hypothesis in the introduction section. But where do you like to keep it? Exactly. I'm coming there. So please wait for a bit. Okay. Okay. All right. I have a, I have one question. Please. I have a question. Please. If you have a time. Yes, please go on. So is that your quantitative or qualitative? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like some of uh, references uh, mentioned that your introduction will be like a story, and it uh, will have a three and five paragraph. Uh, try to make three or five paragraph. More than five and three paragraph is not like uh, acceptable for the journal. Is it right or wrong? More than five what? Paragraphs or uh, pages? Yeah, 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 yeah. More, yeah, no, no, more than five paragraphs. Yes, if not it's more than, than five paragraphs. Yeah, yeah. Why? Let me give an example. When I started, yeah. if I could start talking only about me, what I have done, what I have blah, blah, my MBA, my everything, will you like it? Would you like it? No. No, because you already know that background, right? And you are not interested about that. You are interested about what? Something new. So they want it. Let me give you the example. One, this is my airing paper. See how many paragraphs? One, two, three, four, five. But there is small, that is why we make it. See here, one, two, and then three. See another, another paper if I go, this one. One, two, three, four. Paragraph finish. If you see my other papers, see here, one, two, three, four, or it is a little bit bigger, it's okay. We put some literature there, but 
at the very beginning of the journey. I'm teaching you how to prepare. That means I'm putting in mind you don't know. But in my next, you know, workshops, I will take some people who are actually already creating that. That is another one. But here at the very beginning, you should not annoying. You should not disturb the reader by putting four or five pages back down. You should make sure that you do it by the two, two you know, pages maximum. Got it? Thank you. Yeah, the most welcome. Thank you. Right. Any other question? No. All right. See here, now I'm putting my, we are going to literature review. Can you see here? Yes. The literature review, the review of relevant literature and theoretical frameworks, identification research gaps and knowledge deficiencies, critical analysis, synthesis of existing research, theoretical foundation and conceptual framework. My dears, Whatever I believe, maybe some other expert may have some other opinion. I do respect them, but since I did publish something and I'm here to tell you my way of journey. Literature review is something what I do before I prepare my introduction. Have you got the sentence? Come again. Yes, sir. Right, how I do that? Because if you see here, let me tell you. Can you see so many printed papers in my hand? Yes. What I do, I do keep my head. Look, I'm writing my head some information. I do write in the here. I do write in the soft copy. I do put in the notes what I am doing actually. I'm trying to read. I'm trying to make sure that I am literature review and I'm trying to figure out how I will prepare my background of the study or some introduction which will contain background, context, significance, rationale, objectives, problem statement, right? If you know that much of literature, you will be able to prepare that much of specific and brief the introduction section. If you do not know much of literature, your introduction section will be something vogue and something unpleasant for the readers. Got the sentence, whatever I said? So what yes. does it mean? It means that before you write your introduction section, you should firstly read a lot of research papers. Lots of, it means that at least 50 research papers you read by like a surgery from top to bottom. You have to sit down for two, three hours together. You have to build that capacity. Otherwise you will be in big problem. All right, so I'm telling you something about it. Just give me one moment to bring something for you here. Can you see this box? Yes. Yes. Can you see different colors? Yeah. 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 Right. In the literature review, whenever you read, oh dears, you have to make sure that you become sincere to prioritize things, to color them out so that later you can actually make sure to bring them into the introduction section. So in the reality, people will read your introduction, but behind you will do what? You will do literature review. Got my point?
Uh, it's okay. difficult to, to read 50 articles before I started to uh, write. It demands a, a lot of time. No, it's not. To be honest, it's not. Reading a research paper of this one, it will take two to three, two hours. Two to three hours. So in a day, you can read at least five papers. If you do start reading for a few days, you will see how much easy to read it. But if you are lazy, if you didn't read, you don't have the reading capacity, you must not apply for a research paper. You won't be able to be successful. You can't make sure that you do something by that. Yes, um, Sabba, what is that? Would you like to ask anything? Can I ask a question, sir? Can you can you brief something about the theoretical foundation and conceptual framework? Most people say conceptual framework and theoretical framework. So what's the main difference and what should be used in the papers particularly? They prefer yes. conceptual or yes, coming, coming to the point. Just one moment, just one moment. I'm coming to that point. Excellent question. Just one moment. Let me give you an example of it, right? Let me show you here. Can you see this? Yes. Yes. A conceptual framework. What did you say? The conceptual framework. Look, in the beginning, oh dears, never be confused by so-called conceptual framework, research framework, blah, blah, blah. Don't worry. You don't need to be that much of confused about these rubbish things. I say at the beginning, it is a rubbish for you. But whenever you are a strong person, it is matter for you. What I'm saying, how I have created this paper, what's the base of it, this conceptual, this framework. The base of it is the social exchange theory. And we have put that somewhere here about the social exchange theory. Can you see here, social exchange yes. theory, some explanation? Yes. That means, this theory told you that if you give something, people will be grateful and they will show the gratefulness. See, we postulated, we assumed based on the review that if I put green recruitment and selection, employee generation Z or millennial, generation Y, millennial will show more retention. So my theoretical background, theoretical framework gave me to prepare what? This conceptual framework. Is that clear, my dear brother? Yeah, somewhat clear. Now come to point your conceptual framework. It is also one type of conceptual framework, but some people tell me, no, Dr. Asad, it is not conceptual framework. What is that then? Another one is that whenever I prepare my own thesis, if you go to the main thesis, again, no single paper is the Bible. They have so many mistakes. You have to keep all the time in the mind that it can be something mistake. So I'm not telling my thesis is something which is the most you know, perfect one. If I take you my thesis, you will see that I prepared one conceptual framework. There is no hypothesis in this thesis because this is a qualitative thesis. So see here what I created. See, conceptual framework. I prepare all these things from the last backgrounds, theories and everywhere. Then again, I prepare another conceptual framework by illustrating where is my contributions new to the current body of literature. And I also articulated how my thesis contributed and enriched the present theories, some theories I underpined in this research paper. Got it? So these are here. And you is the beginning, please don't be confused about these kind of things. This will be really, really bad for you. All right, make sure that you don't do it. Just for a moment, I am to reply a emergency, I you know, uh, reply.
So I was for here. Now the theoretical foundations, theoretical foundations means the theory tells you, please do it. And then you prepare some. You can hear me, right? Hello? Yes, go on. And then you check the theory as a base, and then you put all the elements in the theoretical framework. That is what you can say that this is something called the conceptual framework I'm going to examine or investigate or something in queer. All right? So here, the thing is that what should be in your literature review? I, what I do normally in the literature review, you can see that I normally provide something about the country, what I am selecting, about the industry, what I'm trying to do, what are the things surrounding it. Rather than I put any specific name of the countries, what I do, I put all those discussions inside the arguments so that people can understand that the very nice way. For example, here, HR practices of this one, we put here how the industry and something aligned or something like this. So what I'm saying, play with your item, I mean, play with your main aspects, theoretical or conceptual aspects, rather than to the conceptual things. I mean, contextual, geographical, industrial, all these things, rather than you concert, concentrate to the key items in the literature review. You put some identification of the research gate. Whenever you will tell someone has done it, someone has not done it, someone done it, but in another industry, someone done it 10 years ago, someone done it, that is not accepted by another researcher, but that is corroborated by another one. For example, another research paper has told me or called for another research paper relating to this, and therefore this research matters. And that is what your critical arguments in the literature review you have to do by every you know literature review. And that is how you will develop the you know some kind of hypothesis. There are so many ways to develop hypotheses, but whatever I have said, it is one of kind for the beginners to start writing a research paper. Any questions so far here? Sir, uh, still I have confusion about conceptual framework and theoretical framework. Uh, if I do prolong this one, it will it takes one other workshop. So that's why I have to go and skip like this this way. The theoretical framework, which gives you a base that is tells you specifically these are the elements. For example, the social networking theory, social exchange theory, what does it, this theory tells? This theory tells that if, if you give something, people Doctor, will give it back. Doctor. Yes. Uh, can I a little bit help you? Please, yes, please, go on. Uh, I mean, the question is theoretical framework and conceptual framework. Conceptual framework is researchers construct and theoretical framework, I mean underpinning theory, how theory support my ideology or hypothesis? Yes, one moment here, just take it. Don't take the theoretical framework as a, this kind of eye-catching framework. This is what, is it Joshimbai, right? Yes, yes, yes. Joshimbai told it. Theoretical, I mean the framework, this word, this is something narrative. But whenever you say conceptual framework, this is something illustrating, graphical. Yes, and I can say easily, say for example, if uh, ownership structure and farm, farm performance, how agency theory or picking order theory or blah, 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 this theory supports my ideology hypothesis. Exactly. That is called theoretical framework. Exactly. Here, see here, this theoretical framework, I mean the social network, social actions theory is <laughs> supporting this conceptual framework. The confusion here, you try to think theoretical framework like as this graphic, but there is nothing like that. Theoretical framework gives you the assumption and you prepare yourself based on that assumption, a conceptual framework. Is it clear now? Thank you, sir. Okay. It's totally clear right now. Exactly. Totally now, clear. now, let me tell you, Thank some you. people will try to confuse you. 
by these kind of things, they will be showing you they understand too much. Ignore them. Don't try to argue with them. Simply ignore them. Whenever I started publications, I didn't know these kind of things. But some of my peers who are now in the queue for next three, four years to do my research with me, they were laughing at me. So thank you, Joshim Bai, because I was not understanding the question. That's why I was answering that way. Thank but you. Most I'm welcome. Most welcome, Doctor. We are pleasure to hear your nice work. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much. Really, you are so much a uh, nice presenter. We are really. Thank you, Joshim Bai. Thank you so much. So. Do you really understand about the theoretical foundations of the framework or the conceptual framework? Yes, sir. Yeah. Any other questions about no, this sir. one? Yes, sir. How do we determine the theoretical gap in research? Yes, excellent question. Thank you. Look at here. Theoretical gap means some, some people define it some different way. But so far from my understanding, I define it. Let's say one theory has not been applied in one context a gap, can be a gap. Let's say a theory has not been applied in this by that methodology, that can be a gap as well. A theory has not been applied in a, in a, you know, in a generation of employee, that can be a gap too. A theory has not been undefined ever, but you are trying to make it, that can be a gap. A theory was applied, but the theoretical assumption was identified as wrong. That can be a gap too. A theory was found very significant in another context, but nothing is here in your context. That can be too. A theory was not examined in the context of some literature, but you are going to apply. That can be a gap too. That is what I have said in the, in the background of the study, that although we are postulating that, we assume the social action theory give us that. Got the point? Is it something clear for you? Yes, sir. and is it a must that we identify a theoretical gap when we are writing a background of the information? Yes, in the theory, in the research paper, you must do it. If you don't do it, it is very bad. The other thing is that you have to be all the time humble. How I had managed a while ago, I was not understanding the question, Joshim by get in, and I respect it nicely. And I take it very positively. What is the problem becomes among our researchers is that they become very proud. They become arrogant. They don't want to learn more. Try to learn more all the time. That will be good for you. But make sure you ignore too much confusion. Be specific and brief. So now I'm moving to the methodology. Can you see here? Uh, sir, I have one more question uh, regarding the last issues. Yes, please. Sir, how can you define the method, method, uh, methodological gap? Because I read your uh, last paper, maybe um, uh, women leadership in Malaysian universities. So I, I saw uh, you have collected the data only from the university's level, but the, the standard is you must have the data if the uh, number of participants is unlimited, then you must have to collect data from at least 384 or 385 sources but there are a number of sources are less that is that creates me confusion that was is there any methodological gap inside that uh, uh, inside that paper or not i i would like to have your uh, kind justification yes is it that paper uh, business strategy and development about the quality paper a few days ago talking about uh, uh, no no sir it was uh, maybe um, uh, women leadership in malaysian universities or somewhere the the paper that you have shown it earlier this one, uh, the Erang paper. I mean. Yes, yes, this paper. This one, right? Right. You are saying that uh, these people are so many? Uh, number of uh, the uh, data sources are very less. Yes, that's why you this do... paper is very strong because this is a qualitative paper. This is not a quantitative paper. Oh, understood, understood, understood. And is to, to get the interview you know, appointment, I had to work for two years just to make sure they will be agreeing to answer my questions. How many years? Two years. Yes. Sir. With how many people? Only 20 people. You cannot right. imagine how much tough it was to convince them. I need your insights to done my PhD. So anyway, uh, that is another time I will tell you if you would like to prepare quality paper in the future, maybe. Now I'm going to, any other question? 
Now I'm Very gonna... fair. Yes. Uh, I've asked in the chat box, is it compulsory to include the literature review on our research paper? Because I think I've read some papers which don't have a literature review. There might be by other name, but you should have it. Since you are a beginner, you should have it. I, from my, you know, expertism, I have published more than 30 papers in Scopus nowadays, some accepted and published. I understand it is 100% needed. Some, yes, some are there, they know it. Maybe they were published by the very big professors who are very worldwide renowned. There may be some kind of exceptionalities and they are uh, strong enough to justify their deck paper with the journal and they publish it. But if it is a predatory journal, ignore it. All right? All right, thank you, sir. Good. Here, the methodology, the problem with the methodology People ignore some part of the methodology. Please, in the methodology, you should make sure you put this as design approach. You should put data collection methods and instrument. You should make sure you explain the data analysis techniques and procedure. You should also try to put ethical consideration limitations. If it is your quality paper, you must put the ethical considerations and limitations. You also make sure to try to put in the methodology. But I know it is difficult to put all of them due to the limitation of the, you know, uh, journals, word counts. But I try to make sure that all the time I accommodate, I internet it. See here, the methodology section of a paper. See, sample data collection here. You see here, I have put it somewhere one sentence. This is a quantitative paper. So it means I provide the approach and this is design. I put the measurements. Then I try to articulate here. What are the Likert scale something? What is the sample size? What were the respondents or something? I also put some kind of, you know, what's called, uh, some items are there, everything are there. If I show you something in more details, you can see here, if you go this one, even qualitative one, I don't know either, see, we have put some kind of uh, our, you know, these things. I mean, the respondents information briefly, you have to show one tendency, one interest to the auditor that you are very sincere to make sure that you are trying to tell everything what you tell. You are not trying to hide anything. If you read my methodology sections, they are very brief, very specific, but they have all the elements, whatever I mentioned here, just to make sure that editors find everything. If I show you method section here, see quantitative method because this one, cross sectional because this one, quantitative survey here, then we put some items, we put CMB or also some others, you know, all the justifications that even we took the help from, you know, uh, I think sometimes here in the appendix, we put it there that, okay, it is here. But make sure that you try to accommodate all the items of the methodologies as much as you can that will make your reader, I mean, the editor happy to understand you are sincere with the methodology. You didn't take part any, you know, some unethical practices. Okay. Now you can ask me, sir, what methodology and how? That things, I think it is not possible to discuss now, but I'm trying to tell you that how to prepare the papers and to in preparing the papers, you need all these elements. That is where I'm trying to knock for you. And I hope that will be beneficial for you. What are the findings? Findings also can be renamed as a result presentation or analysis of the results. Here in the result presentation, nowadays, journals do not like color. So that's why we make it gray or something. Try to put as much as table you can put. Try to make sure you put the items of the paper I mean, the question here, either in the background, in the appendix, or maybe in the other areas. That will help you to tell your, you know, people, your reader that, yeah, look, I have put everything. My presentation of the analysis are good. You try to put your all the results, but not all of them. Be smart to, you know, present all the specific one. That will definitely help you to do so. All right, here 
The thing is that I put this one comparison with existing literature and theories for your benefit. I deleted it from here. You should make sure that you put it here rather than here in the discussion section. In the discussion section, you should compare your findings. What does it mean by the comparing findings? It means that you were preparing this, let's say uh, this, I mean, if I show you this one, not this one, this one, let's say you prepare this hypothesis based on what? On these arguments. So how many put here? I mean, three citations here or some citations here. Now, if you find out that training and development is insignificant, in terms of positive, insignificantly, insignificantly positive in relation to million retention. Comparison means you will compare this, this information with the previous people who found that this is the, you know, similar to your findings. If it is not similar, even you can put that it is not similar, maybe it is for something new. And you put the, some theoretical justification here why it was not similar, maybe due to the different respondents or maybe due to the different kind of methodology or maybe due to the time or maybe due to the respondents interest to engage in or maybe due to your analytical problem. You have to provide the justification there. Furthermore, you have to show that how your findings are different. Finally, you will tell them, you can show that why your findings are different and that is will definitely eye catching for the readers to find out where something new. Any question here? Yes, sir. I have a question. So, so, so I, I would like to know that uh, the uh, hypothesis that you have shown, the training and development is, there is a positive relationship between the training and development and the employee retention. And you, are, uh, you have guided us to do a comparison between the earlier findings and the latest findings. This is the one, yes, sir. In the discussion. Uh, in the discussion, sir. I'm not teaching Master. you how to develop the hypothesis. But let me show you here. That's one moment. Then, yes, no, sir. no, sir. My question is, if through the correlation analysis and the regression analysis or some other method, if I can prove that there is a positive relationship between them, can we please also put these results in the, uh, the, uh, the, in the discussion uh, section? Because you are already putting the results here in the result section. See here? Can you see? That will be repetition. If you put the results again here in the discussion, that will be boring. What do you have to do? See here how this is. We found, let me tell you one sentence. In this, look at here. Aligned with the Hertzberg two-factory theory, the, the findings of the study reveal that HR practice included in this study, except employee participant decision-making, have a significant relationship with million employee retention in hospital and tourism. See here how we compare. We compare these results are consistent with previous research conducted TND and retention, by whom? This. Compensation, we found significant determination this one, and that is consistent with whom? This one. This study found negative relationship with that, that person, and in this regard, institutional and buoyant and cultural values in Bangladesh could be possible reason. Did you see that how we argue? Why we didn't find out the significant? Uh, yes, sir. But this is qual a qualitative, uh, qualitative portion, sir. No, it is a quantitative. Quantitative, sir? Yes, this is quantitative. The okay. thing is that, before you reach in the beginning, before you reach your decision, follow my instruction, everyone. Read before you do. You read right. too much. If you read, if you reach in a you know conclusion that I will do that way, you will be killing yourself. Still, whenever I do prepare, I do write papers, I keep all of them within two you know tables. You can see one table here one bookshelf here and I have another table in front of me. Why I do that? Because I put some sample papers around me to find out from different kinds of views and then I summarize. Then again, I asked my peers in the research project, am I right? Can you please help me? Because they read more than me. All right? So have you understood that how to compare and align with your theoretical justifications?
from this, you know, sample here? Yeah, understood, sir. Understood. Excellent. Now here, addressing research limitations and potential biases. Since you didn't find the significant, or maybe you found significant, nobody found significant earlier, then you can say, what were the potential bias or research limitations? See here how we said, maybe Bangladesh context, it is something different, all right? See here, Bangladeshi culture from which our participants were recruited, exhibit culture that represent bar market oriented value despite the highly collectivist and high power society. So this is how we argue. There are always arguments. You could try to explore them in the research papers. All right, now let's go to the implications. Let me show you by the you know, animation for your better understanding. In the implications, highlight the implications and significance results, literature plus theory and practice. In the literature plus theory, you should show how it enrich current understanding in the literature, how it developed existing literature review, how it's contributed to the theory that you underpin in the literature. In the practice, articulate why the managers are benefited, why the practitioners have found it significant, why policy makers should ensure that that is very significant, why government should find out that this is very significant, maybe for our decision making, why community and society needs, why employee needed, why some other gender needed, why, 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 I mean, all the practices. That is what you will be providing here. The one thing I always tell implications is the part of the significance, how it implicate others in terms of theory and in terms of practice. If you can put that, that will be good. In addition to this theory, you can even put these two parts, even you can put methodological implications, dears. If you can put that, that is also good because you applied some new methods, maybe it is good for others, all right? Any questions so far here? Let me show you something, some sample here. Did you like my sample approach of uh, workshop? Yes. Yes. Sir. yes. It's very impressive and present as well. Exactly. See here, you see implications. Firstly, we put like this way that our research sheds light on the current hospitality literature in Bangladesh and developing countries, something like this. So how we prepare, how we articulate that how theory is developed. Look at here, Harsbach, 1968, two-factor theory, the results reveal that relationship between feeling and performance and blah, blah, are good. So that is the point. But see here, compensation is not. So many people were trying to get in, but due to the limitations, we could not accommodate. I'm very sorry to them. I had no idea that that much of people cannot be here. Around 500 people has, uh, I think, uh, registered. Anyway, so can you see here how the theory has been implicated? See here, can you see the theory? See? Yeah. Now, if you go here, you will see it is all, all these things at the literature implications. If you go down, you can see research provides some information for what? HR professionals, key decision makers regarding the millennials. We have also shown how the policy makers, can you see the policy makers? Yes. Yes, sir. See how they are the policy makers. We have also shown that how the, you know, uh, practitioners, can you see them? We have also shown that how the other countries can be there, you know, beneficial about that and something like this. That is how you have to articulate the, you know, uh, uh, implications. All right, now let me move on to the conclusion. Here, I didn't put the conclusion, but in the beginning of my studies, we put the conclusion. What is conclusion? Conclusion actually the main point, not something new. Main points of the study, what does it mean? What was your background? What was your main literature review? What was your methodological research? What was the analytical research? What is the analytical process? What you found and finish. That is your conclusion. 
if you bring something new in the conclusion out of your paper, then it will be rubbish. People will be annoyed. Some people do not know how to write the conclusion. You have to start by the writing that to sum up or to saying that that was something like this, the objective. And we prepare, uh, we done based on this literature review. And then we apply that methodology. We presented that results there and there. And then we found this and that. And this has some implications, which has been presented above of the section. It's finished. The only the points, nothing new. But in the research limitations and future directions, am I taking more than the time where allocated, Jorul? Is it good for everyone? Continue. Yeah, it's good. OK. I hope you're finding something new and beneficial for you. Now comes to the research limitations and future directions. Look, if you would like to increase your citation, this is very significant. If I increase that people will talk about you, this is very significant. Because you are firstly becoming very humble that, oh my God, my research paper is not a Bible. I have my some limitations. That is you are humble. Although you publish in Q1 or maybe like me, one you know, top journals, airing journals, but still you are humble. You are saying it can be have some limitations. Then you provide some new directions because you did lots of reading, right? So based on that, you know what else could be accommodated in this research. And that's why you're telling my dear future researchers do something there. And then people will in the future take this, that okay, Mr. Dr. Asadul Islam told that he called for further papers and that is a good for your, what? Your problem statement to find out the gap. Okay, see here how it is. Research limitations can be lots, can be so much limitations. Sampling, analysis, target population, you have only few variables, why you didn't take more 10 variables, it still is limited. You are, you know, uh, contexting one industry, why not more other industry? That is why this is limited. That is why you should say that purpose, we propose some directions like this, that, different sampling strategy, different analysis. For example, you propose quantitative, you did quantitative, you can tell mixed or qualitative. You can tell cross-sectional or maybe longitudinal. You can say you done the like say motivation. You can say, uh, let's say salary. You can say that what about the wages? What about the work environment? What about the job security? They impact on the retention. So some new variables. You can put some recommendations for the new context. You can also recommend for the future some comparative studies, so many recommendations you should provide here because based on that sentence, people will actually, what they will do, they will cite your papers, okay? If I show you one sample here, see, due to the resource and time constraint, can you see that? There are some limitations. For example, survey was conducted by Dhaka, Bangladesh, and future researchers could do more in another divisions. We included only four types of organizations. That's why future can be more. We have also uh, done some HR practices can be more. What are they? Support, support, human planning, organizational commitment, teamwork, improving understanding HR, blah, blah, blah. We have also find out something that negative, but why it is that? So do something in another culture. We have also said that there was some uh, COVID-19 issue, try to put some more research. And we have also put something that more for more and more. So this is how it should be your limitations, reach, uh, I mean, uh, limitation and future directions. You must include it in the research paper. But the thing is that you can align it with the conclusion, but make sure you put a paragraph. All right, so so far something is missing, right? What are they? References, oh my dears you must make sure that you respect the journal referencing style. You should make sure that you highly appreciate the appendix if you can put the appendix there. You have to make sure that you put the, you know, acknowledgement in the paper. You should make sure that you respect the journal format. If you don't do that, journals has so many publications, they will actually, you know, reject whenever they don't 
see your sincerity with that. I never do that. I always try to format that, I mean, whole format, I follow that sincerely. So that's what you have to make sure. All right, the thing is here, can you see? Some journals have so many submissions every day. The officials are not your friend, not your relatives. So your past impression becomes negative that you don't care about their format. They will actually reject it in the desk. And first sight lasts long. That is what, you know, worldwide recognized. You have to impress some people who check your paper first normally. Sometimes papers checked by the administrator who do not have any kind of research or conceptual knowledge. They see either formatting is fine, then they send it to the managing editor, then maybe to the managing editor, the chief editor, or maybe they send directly to the chief editor. Now see, your editor does not know either it is rejected or something. Sometimes your managing editor also does not know because you didn't respect their journal format. That's why you should respect the format, right? Where will I get the topic? Is that the questions you have in your mind? Yes, sir. Exactly. Yes. Read a lot, firstly. Find your area of interest. After reading a lot, you will be able to find out either I am good at organizational behavior or human resource management practices or in management or in women leadership or all of them. At the beginning, try to find out your area of interest. Don't say anyone that area is not good because you don't know which area are gonna be good in this current world. Don't say one science, one brilliant student all the time brilliant because you don't know so many stupids are becoming successful nowadays. So never focus too much, all right? Try to find out your interest and follow your passion and interest. Follow some samples, as I said all the time. I have so many papers with me. If I show you here, can you see it here? So many papers. Can you see that? Yes. These are yes. all samples that I printed within the last two, three months. I, whenever I changed my home, I mean a flat, I did that. When I finished my PhD in Malaysia, when I coming in Bangladesh, I have a video, I don't have it now with now. My daughter has a car, you know, stroller. What is the, yes. I was putting and crying. I was crying and putting all those research papers in there and in the somewhere in the respectable place so that they are trashes nicely. Because I actually attached with them because I touched everything of those papers. There were more than 50 to 80 kilos of the research papers. Got it? So that is what I read. And to find a topic for me, it is just a two, three minutes time. It will be fine for me to find a topic for a Scopus Index journals. I mean, the Q3 or Q4 journals. Why? Because I read a lot. I identify my area of interest and I follow some sample. If you send me a paper relating to accounting, finance, or even other areas, I will say, sorry, I don't know anything about it. I can't be collaborating with this. Although I can put some mere comments for you. So that's why work with your area of interest. Discuss with your peers. As I said at the very beginning, Mark Zuckerberg is the co-founder. Can you imagine? He might be sharing the Facebook idea with his friends. Am I right? What he just said, it is what I'm doing. He was taking the you know, support from others. So discuss with your peers. They will definitely help. If they take your topic or idea, don't worry. You will get something new all the time because you are someone explorative. Future directions of the research paper. Try to take all the time future directions of the research papers. Some people tell, some experts, go to the call for papers, you will get the research topic. I really don't believe that because call for papers already are researched by those editors and they might be are old already. Maybe they are, there are so many experts who are already doing research on them. So you are the novice, you cannot do that. So that's why find out all this way I believe you will find a topic very nicely for a Scopus Index journals. During the submission, select a few suitable journals. Make sure you respect the aim and scope. 
select the most appropriate one you cited in the paper. Make sure that you should have at least three to four citations in that journal where you are going to submit. Make sure that you cite chief editor or managing editor or area editor to get your paper at least under review. Got it? During the submission? Yes, yes. Yes, this is what is very important. I know some people will feeling offended, but you know, the editors like to see their papers are being cited by you. Careful, all right? And then submit. During the submission, make sure that as a novice researcher, you should not submit all the time. It is not a good impression. Sometimes they reject it straight away. I had this experience. So try to find out someone who is expert because correspondence is matters. Make sure that you write a good cover letter. I'm going to show you some sample cover letter. See here, during the first submission, how a sample cover letter should be. I am taking this sample from Saidu Rahman sir. He's one of the highly impacted research paper in the world. He is the distinguished professor of Sanwe University. If I say something good about him, that will be less how much prolific and renowned and famous researcher he is. And I do respect, and I do respect for him. And oh my God, I do remember him in my prayers. He gave this cover letter during the submission as a sample one. Can you see here? Basics, importance, originality, scope. You have to follow that. That will definitely help you to pass the initial stage after your submission. Got it? Now, after your submission, you got the revision. Make sure you take it seriously, positively. Never think you are right always. Maybe you are thinking, I'm right in that stage, but why editor said it is not right? Why reviewers could not understand? Don't think like that. Research gives opportunity to be humble and resilient. You should be humble and resilient, okay? Make sure that you revise, get accepted, and publish, all right? This is the after review. Let's say your paper has got revision. Can you see how much humbleness here I am showing to the editor? See, my colleagues and I would like to express gratitude, something to revise. My colleagues are very grateful to the reviewers. We have tried, I said what? We have tried to comprehensively at least all the review comments Paper has gone, undergone significant changes, improvements. We have supplied detailed you know, response and comments. All the changes can be seen directly in the reverse version. We put color and track version in the manuscript highlighted in the graph. We have also prepared paper by professional proofreader. We have also provided the certificate of the proofread and receipt for your kind review. And then we have taken support from other two authors, new authors maybe, something like that. Even we have told that we will be more than happy to bring more changes and improvements if required. This is how it should be your after one revision so that the editor understand you were sincere and you are still sincere to bring changes. Got the point? You have cannot mention too much things here that dear professor, if you get this accepted, my job will be fine. I will be very happy and grateful. You don't need to, you cannot push that way. You have to push what you have done and humble way, All right? Cover letter sample. Humble is specific and is specific poems. Accepted and published, celebrating publications. So that's all from me, to be honest. If you have any questions, you can ask me here. You can contact me over this way. And uh, you know, I hope we'll be see each other in the cross you know, road. So the thing is that, if you'd like to email me, maybe it's taking time to reply, but I will definitely send you, you know, the reply if you have any kind of things. And I'm going to be regular in terms of the research workshops because I have already conducted some internal mentoring, one-to-one -one mentoring workshops. And my, all of my students who listen to me, they got minor correction in the proposal defense, in the comprehensive exam, and in the thesis defense, final defense. But my have some students who do not listen to me. They got the major and even one year provision, something like this, because they didn't listen to me. In the research, 
you have to be very humble because you are getting the degree from two, three, four people actually. You cannot argue with them in that way. You cannot ignore their instructions. You have to follow some steps. So that is why all since all of my internal mentee are very much benefited. Now I believe that I'm prepared to conduct some regular workshops for the you know, bigger contribution to the academia and the practice. So I hope I will get some of you there and see you there. If you need any kind of help, I hope you will be attending there and recommending. So thank you so much, everyone. Now the time to take the questions. If you have any questions, please ask me. I will try to entertain you. Sir, I have a question, sir. Yes, please go on. Sir, so all we have done right now, but I, I have something to say. When I start or thinking about writing a paper in this case, what should be done actually? Yeah, I, am, I would like to say about the uh, process and the steps, what should we follow to writing a paper? In a that is what paper? I have told throughout this workshop. Firstly, you have to read a lot. Firstly, you have to read a lot. Ideal of means what? 50 papers at least. And then you have to find out your interest of the area, right? You have to follow some samples. Then you have to write, then you have to discuss with your peers. You have to see what are the future directions. You create one topic, write one topic. Then you start where? In the introduction. Can you see in the introduction, following this one? This is how you start. Does that answer your question? Yes, sir. Right. Anyone else, please? Um, yes, sir, yes. I have a question. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, I have a question, sir. Yes, please. Hello, doctor. Yes. Yes. My question goes to chapter two or related literature review. Sorry? I want to I want to know the difference between empirical studies. Empirical studies and conceptual studies, conceptual review. In empirical review and conceptual review. Yes. Don't try to, don't be confused by these kind of things. There are some professors who will confuse like this. Follow just the literature review. Follow my papers, follow this way, that's fine. Don't worry. Some people will confuse you. Look, the conceptual review and the literature review, again, are the same. You are reading the papers and then you're finding something that has been done in that area, something not, some people are telling, and then you are proposing something to be done. And you can say it as a literature review in a whole. Now, if you become again to the confusion, then that will be annoying something like this. You have to forget this one. You have to just follow that I will do some literature review like this way and I will start the publication first. And then you will see this kind of budging words will not confuse you. I don't have any direct answer of this kind of questions because I don't try to confuse my students with these kind of things. I just tell them, please do literature review the way I do. Make a literature metric sometimes, but don't worry about what is called uh, empirical review, what is called conceptual review, what is called something like this. These are really annoying because these are not something in the high impact journals, they look for. They look for the way, this is the way. Does that answer your question? Uh, Doctor, Doctor, I have a question. Doctor, yes. Yes. Uh, can, can I have something with you? Yes, please. Uh, basically, uh, I know conceptual literature review, separate example, defined management. So, Dr. Asad say management like that, or Kunz say management like that. Uh, I mean, the concept, based on the concept, is called a conceptual literature review. But empirical means you are checking or you are investigating the result dependent variable and independent variable, what you have found, what another authors found in this area that calls empirical literature. 
here is one objection <laughs> Mr. Pai, that you know I don't want to confuse by this kind of thing. Okay, 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 doctor. In Malaysia, I sometimes insult some professors about that. But why you are confusing like this? Because in the reality, this kind of thing does not exist. If you see my ERN publication, nobody said these kind of things. Basically, there's a literature review. These are, yes, these are the things annoyed me in my beginning. I was like a mad. Okay, what is that? What is that? Then I find out what is stupid arguments here. Why are you doing like this? And even in my professional defense, I said, please, I mean, can you show me one yes. piece of paper where they made conceptual empirical conceptual review or empirical review. I mean, I mean, result is the empirical, basically. Exactly. So what I tell you, the brother who asked me, look, don't be confused by that. Try to read the papers. Try to say someone has find out this way, that way, and that way. And then you are trying to do this way. Why you'd like to try this way, that way. And then you prepare, a, you know, one uh, hypothesis and just finish it. But if you always sit down there like me, what I did 15 days, 10 days to find out, to be clear about that, it just wasted my time. Whenever I started ignoring these things, I just following some sample papers, I started publishing and I whenever I sent you to email to my peers, they rejected my idea because they thought, they find out I'm confused. But whenever I read in that sentence, forget about this kind of bad words or confusing words, go here, that will help you out. And I started publishing in very high impact journals. So that is why don't worry to learn in that kind of things in the beginning. Try to learn just the literature review. Try to learn just the conceptual framework what you are going to examine. That will help you. And then whenever you are in my stage, become again confused about these kind of things if you're going to teach someone else. But since I'm going to pub, just teaching you how to prepare that, I'm just trying to tell you what are the really needed words rather than I waste time here. Okay, does that answer your question? Hello. Uh, hello, doctor. Hello, doctor. I have uh, two questions, please. Uh, how many literature we need to review in the literature review? Yes, that's a good question. If I go here, you see here, there is maybe 70 to 80 or maybe 100 journal articles here. But to be honest with you, me and the co-authors here, we have read at least 500 articles. Can you see here the co-authors? All of them. Here are the six, but we have mentioned how many? We have mentioned 100 around. So ideal is that 80, 170, or maybe sometimes 35, 50, it's based on your justification, your strength. But in the beginning, I believe it is, should be 60 to 100, you know, citations should be good for you, but you have to read a lot. You have to read a lot, but to develop the idea itself, as I told, you should read at least 50 articles just to develop the topic. And then whenever you develop the topic, you will be able to get something really interesting idea. Then you will find out that idea, how that was swimming in the current literature. Then you will accommodate all of them inside here. Does that answer your question, sister? Only, I, I, I want to say sister. only in, in the literature review, only in the literature review, how many no, insights? Don't say that. Literature review is the expansion of your sometimes or your introduction. So what you are citing in the introduction, you have to cite in the literature review too. So you have to correlate like that way. So let's say you, I mean, did you ask me that how many words you should write down in the literature review? Then mm -hmm. I will one I, one. I want to say how many uh, literature I need to review or um, my fourth citation in the literature review. Yes, that is what I told. You have to read a lot. There is no limit. I read normally, for example, nowadays, I'm trying to prepare papers for airing journals or a study event. So how many papers I'm reading? I'm reading a lot. I'm reading a lot, to be honest. And 
giving a lot is very tough for you, but very easy for me and interesting for me. And that is difference to the different people. So you have to think like that. At least you have to read 50 for the topic and yeah, hundreds or maybe uh, two, three hundreds literature review you have to go through. If I, I have no screenshot, look, in the window, there are some windows in my Google Chrome. It was, you know, really windows were there. That's why you have to read a lot. Any other question, please? Yes, I have another, another question. Yes, Faria? Um, do we need to go for the hypothesis in the uh, quantitative research? Yes, or we must. Always we need the hypothesis or we can do uh, without the hypothesis. I think you must not do without a hypothesis. No one will accept. Without the hypothesis, qualitative. You can do something qualitative or review paper. But in the quantitative, see, we prepare the hypothesis. Can you see the screen? Yes. Right. Uh, so I have a question. Please. Okay, a person who's writing a first journal, like uh, what, what is your suggestion? So where we should publish, whether uh, uh, in Google research or where, like your suggestion? And how many words that uh, we can, like, uh, can write? My suggestion is that at the beginning, you should not try to publish very high impact journal. You okay. should try Q4 or Q3. So how can you find out the Q4 or Q3 journals at the beginning? For example, if you go to Schemago, mm -hmm. Schemago, you will find out here that let's say like this. Can you see the screen? Yeah, can see. If I put, you know, just the uh, journal ranks, then I put here the areas. Let's say business and management. Then I put country. Or maybe here, the, uh, all the things, something like this, let's say human resource management, or this will be something like this. Then I'm trying to ignore this. We are the old type, you just put, you know, journals. And then you see how many came here. Yeah. How many? Yeah. 219, right? Go. 219, correct. Yes go behind, 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 a lot behind, you will find out that this is getting a little bit uh, tricky. Some journals are going to be Q3. So find out okay. them. Sometimes I'm not telling that this Q3 journal is very bad. I'm telling they're less choosy. They may be helping you to go ahead. See here, the Q4, Q4. You should try to out them. And I always tell you, try to ignore the paid journals. At the beginning, nobody tell me that, ignore the paid journals. Nobody, okay. I'm not giving you the name of that person whom I have been going through, but someone from UK, Mahfud Rahman sir, one of my biggest mentors, and I'm very grateful to him. He said, you are very brilliant, you're very interested, don't publish in paid journals, publish in the unpaid journals, you will be able to publish it. And I did it and I'm doing it. So firstly, start from here, then go one by one up. It will sure, be good for you. Otherwise you are jump off by the high impact journals. You'll be depressed. Oh my God, how many, how much insulting or distracting comments you got. Yeah, understood. Right. Any other question, please? Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Sorry, sir, I have a question. Sorry, yes. sir, I have a question. I assume that you have submitted your, your paper and then you have received a reviewer's report. And one of the suggestions is that uh, maybe the, the reviewer wants you to change uh, data analysis method. So is it a must to accept all the comments from the reviewers or you can somehow justify a selection of a particular uh, maybe data analysis method and decline a reviewer's comment politely? Look, let me show you one example of it. One of my comments of my earring paper was that this is not something good research. So how we review them? We provided that. Thank you so much for your questions. Yes, from, from the some perspective, it is nothing. But however, some way this and this and this and this and that is why we believe this and this and that this paper can do in that journal and in the 
academia, literature, practice, blah, blah, blah. We put around 100 or 200 paper justification there nicely to avoid that, you know, uh, uh, comments. Now, if someone put that this analysis is not good, you have to be very humble and you have to put some justification why you use that research methodology. And you can also put some comments that some other, maybe some other reviewers appreciated that methodology. So you can say in line with that one, something like this as well. Okay, so this is how you should reply, but you must not withdraw, you must not argue, you must not say we decline it. We have to argue with very respect, All right? Thank you. Yes, any other questions? Yeah. Need? Uh, question doctor, please. Can you hear question me? I would just ask if how can we say that it is a, a, a clone journal or an active journal, just like, for example, the Gradiva. The Gradiva is a clone or hijack uh, journal. So, how can we see or shall we see proof that the journal is uh, a, an original one, Doc? Yes, that's a good one. What you can do, you can come here to Shimago or you can go to Scopus or you can go to the, you know, uh, what I would say, to the ISI and Web of Science. I don't have access to that. So you can go there as well to see, you know, all these things. That will definitely help you out. Got it? For example, here, if you put the title, you'll find out who are there. And even in the journal, you will see that who are the publishers. Normally, the small publishers are predatory publishers. They do scope, take the scope as after, few days, after a few days, they discontinue. That's why people don't trust them. But always strive for the real one publishers, Willy, Springer, Indescience, you know, uh, Science Direct, and also IGI Global, Emerald, and also, uh, you know, Sage, Belgrave, Macmillan, all these publishers, whatever they do, they are very good you know, publishers. Hello? Uh, excuse me, doctor, I have a question. Uh, it's not about a research paper. Uh, as I said, I, well, I am in the first period of my master's degree in science account, and I am conducting a bibliometric analysis. And uh, in the methodology, I have a doubt with missing data. Uh, when I uh, import to, when I make the download to the Biblia Shiny, I have a missing data. This invalidates my research. I didn't get your question. Can you ask me again, please? Yes, sir. Uh, I am conducting a bibliometric analysis. Uh, and uh, my is about the methodology. Uh, when I collect the data, I treat the data at the R studio, and then I did I do the upload to the Bibliashine. Uh, at this point, I have a missing data. Uh, this invalidates my bibliometric analysis, my research. Still, I'm confused about question, but I think no. In the you know bibliometric research, your methodology need to be concise and clear. If you see my this methodology research, I mean bibliometric research, my friend and me done it. So what we did, we put the you know methodology very very effectively. See, much of the discussion was about the methodology. Got it? So we have put like this way. And then we argue why this is something suitable for the journal and who have done and who hasn't. And then we put you know, all these things there. Then we put the results. So if you did that way, I think journal should respect your argument. But in the literature metrics, I'm sorry, literature in bibliometrics, what reviewers sometimes do, they provide direction. I don't know either they have provided direction or not, but you should, you may ask, some other, you know, uh, specialist, so you can send me an email because I'm not clear about your question, to be honest. But you have to make sure that you put your methodology in very detail rather than in brief. Got it? 
to validate your mm -hmm. method. Any other question? Uh, I think all the answer, all the question answer already. Excellent. Thank you very much, Nasim Arafat. Thank you so much, everyone, uh, for your participation here. I hope I have tried to entertain you with something new. And still, if you have any kind of questions, let me know over these emails. I will try to reply and also try to make sure. Can you hear me? Yes, uh, yes, yes we sir. can hear you, sir. Yes, yes sir. thank you very uh, much. Uh, I have one question. Uh, like, if I need any assistance further or uh, in future, can we contact through email? So, yes, the here is that if I think that that is what I should reply, I should entertain, then I will do it. If it is something beyond my one, I will suggest another one for you because I am not 100% right. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, will there be any more session on this type of subject or topic? I think uh, yes. Organizers will be happy to do so, right? Arafat yeah. and Jorun? Yeah. They are very uh, uh, guys. If you are living in Malaysia, yeah. try to disturb them. Oh my God, at the night, at the morning, wherever it is, this team will be there to help you. Trust me, these people do not have any financial incentives for this kind of things. They are just trying to help them, help the people out. All right. So these are wonderful people. Uh, let them know if you have any problem, they will be coming to your home. As far as, as, far as I know. Thank you, Doctor. All, Thank all you right. For all right. Uh, uh, I think, I think uh, we cannot take any more questions because due to our short time, uh, already we exceed our time. Can you hear oh, me? So sorry, I'm sorry, I forgot that. You know, I, I remember it at uh, you know five o'clock, but then I forgot. Now I find out it is six o'clock nearly. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so thank you uh, so much for your brilliant, brilliant and inspiring sharing with us. And uh, actually, before we uh, signing out, uh, we'd like to take a picture with our honorable speaker. So I'd like to request everyone to put on the camera so that we can take picture. Uh, yes, because uh, so many people. And uh, one thing I'd like to tell you, uh, our session has been recorded, so we'll upload it in our Facebook uh, page. So later, uh, those who cannot join this program, they can uh, watch it and we'll email one each thing of I would them. like to interrupt here, Arafat. Don't think everything is right in my workshop. Don't think that. Try to compare with others. Don't think that I didn't make mistake. I do. That is what I said. Research should make you humble and resilient. All right. Make sure that you take the mistake very nicely. Otherwise, you will be a big problem. I prepared some papers. My peer said it is rubbish. I said, yes, Prof, it is rubbish. Straight away. All right. So please take everything positively. All right. Don't take anything personally. It was something just to make sure that moments are attractive to you. Uh, yes, doctor, because uh, if we don't do mistake, how can you learn? Because the learning process should like uh, uh, learning process actually doing mistake, then we learn. So like we should not be afraid doing mistakes. So, from so Brock University here. anyone? Uh, excuse me, can we get the, uh, get the slides? The yeah, yeah we will share the slides and the recorded video. Uh, in our Facebook prof in our Facebook page and also we'll email you all the details. Yeah, Even the so certificate we'll, we'll provide in the email. Anyone from Brock University here or Bangladesh? How many of you here from Bangladesh? Just sorry, Nasim, I'm taking a little time. Okay. Yes, okay. I'm from yes, Bangladesh. Sir, I'm from Bangladesh. Anyone from Brock University? From Bangladesh. And we are proud of you. I'm from ULAP. All right. Um, I'm from City University. All right. Thank you. Nice to um, have you here. And uh, well, some, yes, I, I have seen so many of you from Tanzania, Nigeria, Pakistan, Canada. And Nigeria. Yeah. I appreciate all of you here. Hope okay. to see you again. Yeah, yeah. Yes, sir. Here are Sabah from Afghanistan. Also. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yes. Uh, all right. All right. Thank you so much. I think uh, we have uh, we have participated more than fifty university uh, here, and with that actually 
I am Mohammad Nasim Arafat, uh, University, International Islamic University, Mal Malaysia. Uh, uh, like signing out from our uh, today's webinar, and I'd like to announce we have another webinar on 8 July. Uh, is it, it is about uh, project management. So we'd like to invite all of you to join that webinar. And with that, I'm uh, signing out from uh, today's webinar. And if there is any mistakes, uh, technical issues, please. Uh, uh apologize any kind of flaws during the event and i hope you enjoyed with time with us thank you so much assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah thank you so much for thank, thank, so thank, thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you